you know, Jess and I have been together since, we've been dating or best friends since uh, she was 15 and I was 16. So literally half our life. I remember he was like the first boy I ever had a crush on. And he was like, I'm gonna marry that guy. And he didn't like me because I was the younger sister. And then he finally saw the light. I'm actually the only person he's ever dated. Ryan and Jessica, you are the real deal. You are the true love story. You're an inspiration for what love should be. And thank you for showing that to all in our community and to me and my husband. My name is Ryan Woods. I have a glioblastoma tumor in my spine. The doctors say I have one to four months to live. I think it might be longer. You know, we always, we always refer to it as our cancer, but... Our like, doctors, our, our cancer. Our doctors are this, are that, yeah. It's, we're in this together. Um, we have very few memories or experiences that aren't shared. Um, so the idea of her doing any part of life um, without me, um, you know, or me without her, is, I mean, is literally unimaginable because we've always done life together. Um, it's weird. Andy Jane, you want to help me mix? You want to come in and show me maybe breakfast? This was, this is ridiculously shocking. <laughs> um, we have no cancer history whatsoever in my family. The type of cancer I have is incredibly rare anyways. You know, I'm young, uh, it's healthy, I, I bike ride a lot. We walk everywhere up until I got cancer, was skinny and scrawny, you know, I mean, in, in a healthy way. <laughs> it's like we do everything you're supposed to do to be healthy and to not be sick and to not have cancer. So he had surgery exactly a year ago today. When he came out of surgery, he was paralyzed from the waist down. And in December, he got really sick. Like, that was when I was like, oh, I think my husband's dying. And it was just this huge awakening of, I think you need to start working, holding this, holding this reality. It might not happen, but at least being willing to go there. I would much rather be the person dying than the people who are living, who are left behind. I think I have it easy. I'm not, I'm not scared of dying whatsoever. The, I get to be reminded and remind other people that, that death, isn't, death isn't anything, you know? Death is just another part of our story, and it's a, it's a terrible, I mean, death is terrible, um, but it's not something to be feared, you know? Really, even though our story's hard, and our story has lots of pieces that are messy and, and tragic, just really tragic, I think there's just so many things that are beautiful, and there's so many things that are um, life-giving and not just about death in the way people have interacted with us, in the way that people have loved us, in the way um, that we've grown through this, you know? So tonight, they're gonna have a roast and toast of... So what they're gonna do is, everyone's gonna come together, all our friends and family and stuff, and they're gonna tell stories, um, and they're gonna tell stories that are funny for the roast, and they're gonna tell stories that are, um, that are serious and nice for the toast. We don't know how to watch them. I will be positive to a fault. Um, and actually, the thing is, I actually really believe it. <laughs> uh, not artificially positive, but I will be, I see the world through rose-colored glasses. You know, Ryan would occasionally come over and say, hey, you know, that was the extent of our relationship, you know, but uh, it's kind of like a fungus. You know, it kind of goes on you. And, uh, you know, in kind of a good way, you know, that uh, it, maybe like a parasite. Maybe that's a, a better term. <laughs> than, uh, it's, it's kind of like a, like a tumor growth or something. Like that. <laughs> you can phrase it that way. Um, One thing that my daughter constantly reminds me of, anytime that she starts to be sad or I'm sad about 
leaving her, she always reminds me, she's like, well, but daddy, you know, we're only gonna be separate for a little while. She said, well, okay, maybe it'll be a long time because I've got a long life to live. She's like, I need to learn how to drive. I need to, I need to get married. So I think what we've decided, he's doing birthday cards for several years. So they'll get a birthday card at every, every birthday. And then like a present when they're 16. Mm -hmm. And then he's just having a binder that we're, he's putting stories and memories yeah. of them. Like, what was it like when I was born? Yeah. Things about him as a child, yeah. things just lots of memories yeah. and stories, yeah. and we're just going to have a binder for each of them. Just going to give it to him, and then they can access it as they want, right. you know. So they're in control of how, how they much they want to remember Dad and when they want to remember yeah. Dad, and you know. I don't have many memories of when I was four years old, um, and so to think of my four-year-old daughter uh, and what she will or won't remember of me mm -hmm. is a scary thought. To think that I, in a lot of ways, will be will be a shadow um, mm -hmm. in her memory. Um, because they know how hard this is for you guys, huh? To have your daddy be sick and to have your daddy dying, they know how hard it is, and so they want to do a special party just for the kids. I hope it's a summer vacation. It will be. I would just invite anyone who watches this video um, to live into this reality that, that we're all dying. Um, it's a cliche statement, but if you're the one, it, I'm actually dying, so I can say that. Um, I can say cliche statements, right? Um, we're all in the process of dying, so the question, the question is, what kind of story are we going to live out as we're dying? I would just invite people to live out a beautiful story, and to live out their life and make beautiful music, regardless of, of what kind of brokenness they have to deal with. And on our journey toward death, which is inevitable, we have the opportunity to, to let a beautiful story be told. And I think it's up to us to uh, allow that story to become something beautiful. And I hope that I get really embarrassed, you know, when, you know, if I don't die in one to four months and, you know, you guys did all these things um, because I'm dying and, you know, and then I don't die, that'd be awesome. I would love to feel awkward because of that. Um, <laughs> Hey, so the people over at Soul Pancake have invited me to ask you to do something in my name. So here's the request. I want to invite you to cultivate a sense of love and community where you live, where you work, and where you play. For us, it's been as simple as shopping locally at the same stores over and over again. It's meant that we drink lots of coffee as we go to the same cafe over and over again. And it means that we have people over for meals often, whether it's a large community meal or just one family coming over. For you, it's going to be something completely different because of your own imagination and your own context. So would you please mind sending in videos or pictures or stories of what it looks like in your context to commit to a life of love and connect, connection where you live, where you work, and where you play? It'd be exciting to see a movement start, wouldn't it? Thanks.